three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Those are exploding pants. Buster's not there anymore. This is a funny one. In 1931, in New Zealand, a sudden and deadly epidemic hit the country. Farmers' pants started exploding. <laughs> You're kidding. Totally serious. They started exploding on the wash lines, in front of fires, and sometimes on the farmers themselves. We all know that there can be explosive chemicals on farms, and it seems that the Kiwi farmers started using a new chemical, which, once it stained their clothes, it could explode. This is too perfect for us. You guys aren't making this up. It brings new meaning to the term fashion disaster. The first victim survived when his trousers allegedly blew up in front of the fire. But others weren't so lucky. Well, I guess in order to make sure that these stories aren't exaggerated, your job is to get some farmyard explosives and some pants. The pants are going to be the easy part. Getting the explosives, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Well, I've been doing a little bit of research, and it seems like there could be four culprits to this. One, it could be made from gunpowder, or it could be made from herbicide, it could be made from fertilizer, or possibly even some acids. So your job is to get these together, mix them with some pants, and see which one goes boom? It's not really gonna be that easy. We have two major issues to deal with. First of all, I'd like to start in the small scale because it's possible none of them work and then we're busted right there. Secondly, I'm pretty sure making explosives is illegal, so we're gonna have to get the FBI involved. And we're also gonna have to shoot this in a way that audiences can't copy us. Because let's face it, we don't want people going around making exploding pants. So that's the plan. The team is going to get hold of four common 1930s farmyard chemicals, add some secret ingredients, and see which, if any, can make trouser torpedoes. So, first things first, the hot pants. I have procured some 100% cotton overalls, and I'm cutting some swatches out of it that are gonna be three by three squares so that we can do a few small scale experiments. To help reveal the killer culprit, the team is going to start the atomic trouser testing in miniature, where they're going to be helped by former FBI agent Frank Doyle. As Adam and Jamie know, Frank is a handy friend to have. These are .223 caliber tracer rounds. After all, it was Frank who helped shoot up a gas tank. Today, our... Uh... This time, he's here to give a booms for beginners class. Just like the uh, flight attendants tell you when you're flying on an airplane, safety is number one, so we want to do everything very safely. Frank's safety brief is crucial because making farmyard explosions can be very, very dangerous. Any questions? I have one question. Did Mythbusters have an FBI file? Oh, I don't know that. That sounds like an administrative question. So it's classified, is that what you're saying? It's classified, just like the wretched recipes that the team is about to make. Starting with Grant. OK, are we ready, Frank? Let's do it. Grant's farm ingredient is a 1930s fertilizer, but the rest of the concoction is a Mythbusters secret. Start with drops. You'll need very little. It's a delicate operation because one false move could spell disaster. Frank, this is like the world's most dangerous cooking show. With exploding trouser culprit one all cooked up, it's on to Carrie's number two. OK, black powder is something you would definitely find on a farm. And um, I'm not sure that everybody in New Zealand could be spreading this on their clothes enough to create quite a panic. But it is something explosive. But because black powder won't cling on clothes, Carrie's turning it into a sticky liquid sludge. It's looking good. OK, that's it for the black powder laundry. So it's time for Tori. What I have right now is a herbicide, and they used it in New Zealand, where this myth came from. This could be potentially explosive. Tori's herbicide is another culprit in this clothing conundrum. Frank. Why are you standing so far away? Because I want to continue to live. So then the next question is, why am I standing so close? With this third suspect close to finishing, it's back to Carrie for the final rancid recipe, gun cotton. 
We know for a fact that uh, when we make the nitrocellulose, it's actually going to change the properties of this cotton and make it into something totally different, which is definitely explosive. So, we've done this before. We made gun cotton in the Confederate rocket story. So I'm somewhat of an expert. Don't be tricked by its cuddly appearance. It was Carrie's cotton wool that gave the Confederate rocket its initial thrust. And just like before, making it is pretty hazardous. You see all that smoke coming off? That doesn't look so good. God, this stuff is nasty. Because Carrie is so confident that this will have explosive results in the small-scale testing, she's also going to prepare a full pair of gun cotton pants for when the team ramps things up. So are we ready for our giant fallout cloud of badness? Under Frank's careful supervision, Carrie starts mixing alarmingly large amounts of the hazardous ingredients. But almost immediately, the reaction starts to spiral out of control. The pants plume out more smoke than a Baltimore bingo hall, and then they start dissolving. That's one minute so far. Four minutes to go. Is there going to be any pants left? It's all gone a bit pear-shaped. Well, cracking the jar. So Carrie and Tori follow the Mythbusters mantra. If anyone knows what to do, it's Jamie. Wow, this stuff is nasty. All right, so in order to blow these pants up, we need to find out certain systems of, of ignition. Well, why don't we just go through the scenarios of the myth, um, the different ways that they possibly could ignite. Like say, you light a cigarette, spark falls onto your pants, they blow up. We could do friction, because apparently these were blowing up as people were walking. One of the most famous stories was when it was drawing in front of the fire, right? So maybe something, a radiant heat source, a heater. And impact, if you sat down really hard, they might burst in the flame. To try to expose the exploding trouser culprit, the team is going to subject each of the volatile vagrants to each of the four detonation systems. The recipe that blasts off most often will then be ramped up for the big scale test. And for round one, it's Carrie's unusual open flame ignition system. I picked the cigarette instead of just dropping a match, specifically for the reason I wanted to create a realistic scenario as to why these pants might come in contact with something such as a cigarette to make them explode. She's hoping that the falling ash will be hot enough to ignite the fabric below. And first up, it'll be landing on Grant's fertilizer-treated trousers. All right, step back. Smoke faster. Carrie's smoking as fast as a school kid in the washroom, but gets nowhere fast. So for take two, Ready? it's out with the cigarette and in with the match. But the results are a little disappointing. I would not exactly call that an energetic ignition. So fertilizer plus flame is uh, infertile. Next up, the black powder. But remember, the black powder was mixed with water. I thought this was going to be a little more exciting. I thought we were going to get a little blast out of this one. Yeah, it's like threatening to blow up. Oh, come on. I think if I were the farmer, I would still have time to get my pants off and run before it uh, caused any problem. All right, so we're ruling out gunpowder. I would rule it out. All right. Next, let's do my favorite, my specialty, good and cut. I know for a fact that this is uh, going to be somewhat explosive, so just in case, maybe put on your ear protection. Okay. So far, it's zero for two. Can Carrie's gun cotton do any better? Hmm, this is your specialty. This stuff's supposed to be gun cotton. All Should right. I take off my ear protection now? Yeah. <laughs> it's another flame failure. That just leaves the weed killer concoction. Can this Herbie go bananas? Graduating to the next level. Lee. Could you imagine walking down the street and this happening in your pants? Boof! That would suck. So the herbicide is winning so far, but how will they all respond to the next ignition test? Radiant heat. We've got our powerful light. Right now, I've got a probe right at the top, and we're at a little bit over 300 degrees. degrees. It's just like a farmer drying his trousers in front of a fire. 
And just like the last test, not a lot happens. The fertilizer doesn't fizzle, the gun cotton doesn't go off. There's some sparkles from the black powder. Woo! Yay! But then once again, the herbicide takes the cake. Oh, oh no! Oh no! The weed killer burns with a massive amount of energy and is easily the emerging culprit for this explosive myth. Okay, well, I'm impressed. That was pretty amazing. Yeah, well, it was very cool. Well, now you know what we have to do. We have to bump this up to full scale. So I'm gonna take a pair of pants and just saturate the heck out of them, see if they explode. Maybe just as a point of comparison, you know, just for fun, we could get a hold of a few real explosives. Well, I'm sure Frank is gonna help us out with that. I just wanna see some really big exploding trousers. At last, using the results of the small scale test, it's finally time to ramp this myth up. If it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing, right? With the overalls fully functional, it's time to hit the road and see if Buster will fly by the seat of his pants. We're here at Alameda Sheriff facility. And this is where Buster's gonna put on his exploding pants. <laughs> Frank Doyle's here. The bomb squad's here. The paramedics are here. <laughs> We're gonna blow something up. Well, it seems that everyone is here, so let's get started. Somebody order some exploding pants. With the pants prepped, step forward our naked volunteer farmer, Buster. Buster, you don't want to do this? Well, that's too bad. Little fella, we're going to blow your pants off. Once Buster is dressed to kill, all that remains is the detonation system. The remote triggering system that the FBI is going to be using on our pants is probably closer to the impact triggering system that we had in, in our uh, small scale tests. With the igniter wired up and the final touches in place, it's time for a Huckleberry Din. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Three, two, one! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, yeah. It burnt completely it totally off. Just, it burnt from head and from wherever it blew up, his crotch, and it just totally burned off. Naked. Now, that's what I call hot pants. The fact that his hat's still here shows how hot and fast this burned. It didn't even make it up to the hat. It just <laughs> disintegrated really quickly. But this myth isn't about disintegrating trousers. It's about exploding ones. So the gang is going to try again this time with a pocket load more of the herbicide hodgepodge. Good luck, buddy. Nice knowing you. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Three, two, one! Wow! That was great. Whoa. That obviously Oosh. burned up twice as fast as that last and it's, one. And it's much bigger, a bigger reaction. That was cool. The pockets of pesticide sure got Buster fired up. But was he fired up enough? Here's my question, though. We call this myth exploding trousers. They didn't really explode. No. I mean, they were just burning rapidly. I have a feeling, though, if you were wearing those pants and they, they burn that fast, you would definitely claim explosion. You need compression to have an explosion. Well, you are not so hard to please. Explosion. But I mean, if your pants burst into flames like this, how would you explain it to somebody? Semantics. It's an explosion. My pants blew up. <laughs> That's what I'd say. I'm with Carrie and Tori on this one. It may not technically be an explosion, but did 1930s farmers really know the terminology? This is myth confirmed. The only remaining question is, would Buster have survived? So as medical professionals, what do you think of the damage? If he just had pants on, it would have burned up on the pants. Maybe he'd have a couple of burns up here in the chest area, but it wouldn't have gone any further. So you're saying he lived? Yeah. Oh, he, he would have lived. Yeah, he would have just maybe had some scarring from the burns, but a person could survive from it, definitely. You lived! Like a phoenix from the flames, Buster smolders to fight another day. But maybe not for long. Buster, you're not over yet. Buster did burn, baby, burn. But for this crew, that ain't enough. They want a real explosion, not a flash in the pan. Cue explosives expert Frank Doyle and his magic silver. This is a high velocity explosive that we're using here, a specialty explosive. And it's much 
faster in detonating velocity than anything that we've used in previous episodes, so we expect Buster to get a pretty interesting ride. This is serious stuff. Exploding with a velocity of 21,000 feet per second, this could be Buster's last goodbye. In the vicinity of five minutes, his pants should be in New York. I think uh, Madison Square Garden or Times Square or someplace like that. With the last wires in check, this boom promises to be one of the biggest in Mythbusters history. So hold on to your pants. Three, two, one. Uh-oh. Uh. I turned it on. Now, that's a problem, isn't it? Right about now, Buster should have been somewhere over Texas, but it seems he's missed his flight. Fire and hole! Fire and hole! Let's try that again. This is it, the main event. Two, one. Oh, no. It's a little quieter than I thought. So generally, if there's a live bomb and the trigger doesn't work, that's bad, huh? That's not good. With some ultra dangerous explosives, this is the worst case scenario. But at least we have the best in the business to sort it out. Well, we had a Murphy's Law glitch. And uh, apparently, there was a uh, minor break in the firing line and that's being corrected, and we're going to move full speed ahead and go to plan B. Oh. Three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Those are exploding pants. Buster's not there anymore. <laughs> that's 10 milliseconds to blow them up and three hours to find the pieces. That was cool. Like a pop and then a Smoldering buster parts all stinking over the field. <laughs> There's his face. Uh, That's a hat. Frank, what'd you do to Buster? Friends okay. and family of Buster uh, should look away no. now. Bottom. Shoot. <sighs> OK, I got leg and knee. That's good. I got a face. There's a thigh. There's a chest and, and a head. Even the great Humpty Dumpty was never this scrambled. What do you got? I got a hand. That's all that's left of his pants. But I guess all Humpty did was fall off a wall, whereas Buster just got blown to smithereens by the bomb squad. I am not disappointed with these exploding pants. That was one of the finer explosions I've ever seen in my life. And when watching the high speed, you can actually watch body parts go off into the hills somewhere. Where, I don't know, but I'm sure they're out there. 